What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Brett Summers. I am here today to give you 35 things that I've learned in my 35 years. Today is June 21st, 2021, and that means today is my birthday. First day of summer, last name Summers, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Um, but I wanted to bring you guys a little information so I can try and help you guys out because you learn a thing or two in 35 years and I'm a very reflective person, so today, like most days, but especially on a holiday or a birthday, Christmas, New Year's, I'm always trying to think and reflect and figure out ways that I can get better to improve myself and to um, take stock of where I've been and where I'm going, some of the things that I'm doing that I'd like to change or some of the things that I'd like to double down on or some of the things that I'm learning. So I think it's very important to reflect and project forward towards where you want to go. So June 21st, 2022, when I turned 36, I want to have made some progress. I wanted to have made some improvements, just like I'm always teaching here on this YouTube channel. And I know it's been a while since I posted a video, but I thought today would be um, a great opportunity for me to bring some new information to you guys and just kind of refresh some older things and give you an insight into where I'm at at this point in my life at 35 as opposed to when I first started this channel when I was 22, 23 years old. So let's get this rock and roll. 35 things, promise not to take all day. Um, got my new cup, cup of ambition that my sister got me. A little water in it today. Things you get on your birthday. My family knows me. So uh, speaking of family, first thing on the list out of my 35 things, I don't know, 35 things, what maybe I'll keyword it and figure out what would be good for SEO on YouTube, but 35 things that are really important for me that I know will probably impact a lot of people out there. For me, um, just a, a big, you know, big important part and piece of my life that just becomes more apparent every day is um, the relationship I have with my mom and how much my mom has truly impacted my life, which has impacted maybe you and some of the people watching this video. So my mom has been a very huge, important piece of my life. And every day I just am reminded of it more and more, her leadership, her ability to endure, her ability to take on challenges, her um, love for her, her family, including me, and that she showed me and my sister and our dogs and an extended family and strangers and random people, um, the way she's always given to other people. It's been such a huge impact on my life. And a lot of times in my life, you know, there are some people that, that were in my life that were supposed to have mentored me or led me, and they didn't. And I would focus on how they didn't, you know, um, certain family members or coaches or people that in my life. But I had such a great leadership example for my mom, and that impacted me a great deal. And I wouldn't be here. I would be who I am today. Um, I don't blame her for my faults, but I do give her the credit for a lot of my success. So my mom is important to me. And as you get a little bit older every year, you should just realize that those people that have really poured into your life, you should realize how important they truly are to you. And I think that's, that's key. The rest of these, I'll keep moving on a little bit quicker as we move through it. Number two, family. Man, family is just super important to me. I'm hoping that it's important to you. It's not just, you know, not everything because all people really matter, but your family. What can you do for your family? What have they done for you? Like my sister, um, my dogs, my dog that passed away last year, Oreo, my best friend. Um, I think back to June 21st last year, me and him are sitting by the swimming pool behind us, kicked back, relaxing, and, and, and cancer took him from me. How awful that is, but how blessed I was to have that, the time with him. Uh, maybe you had family members that were in your life and they've left like that or people that are still there. Man, they mean everything. Make time for your family on schedule. I'm 35. Um, I don't know how old you are when you're watching this. Just spend time with your family. You know, we end up a lot of times spending time with people who are just a complete waste of time. Um, they're nitwits. They don't pour into you. They take from you. They're energy vampires. So it's really important to spend time with your family and people you love. Number three on my list, dogs. And you can replace that with pets because I'm sure you've had a cat or a, a fish or an iguana or a lizard or something like that that you loved, bird. For me, it's dogs. Dogs are a huge part of my life um, from, from my best friend, Champ, that I had around a, a Cocker Spaniel for 16 plus years to Oreo, who I had English Cream Golden Retriever, to my new dogs, Oreo Jr. and Teddy Jr. And... Um, they're a big impact, they're a big stress reliever, they help you re release a lot of chemicals in your body that are really good for you to help you stay calm and decrease stress. And um, dogs are a great friend, they're good, they're good size commitment, but um, they're really worth it. 
It's on my list. My list of 35, not yours. If you don't like dogs, it is what it is, or pets. Number four, meaningful relationships. You see how relationships with your family or a mentor like my mom or a leader like my mom or your clients or anybody that you can really build a meaningful relationship with where you can add value to their life and they can add value to yours, super important in life. So make sure you're pouring into your relationships. Notice how I haven't necessarily talked money or some of these other things that, although it be important, but meaningful relationships for me are really up there on the list. Um, number five is impact. Who's in, whose lives can you impact? Um, what, what impact can you leave in your industry that you're in? What impact can you leave on the people around you to make, to make them better, um, to, make them, to make their lives more impactful because of what you did for them? Um, I think about my team when I think about that. I think about my family when I think about that. I think about people on, on YouTube and you know, a lot of you guys have reached out to me and I've made an impact on you and I haven't even met you and I think that's super important. Number six on the list, it doesn't matter. And when I say it doesn't matter, what I'm really talking about is like those problems, those pains in the high end end that you, that you have to deal with. Something really crappy happens and you have to deal with it. It's kind of like stubbing your toe. And I used that example on a walk with my uh, girlfriend this morning. I said, you know, when you stub your toe, it's excruciating pain. It's, it, you have to stop what you're doing to, to deal with it. You're probably gonna tell somebody, oh my gosh, I just stubbed my toe or I just bit my cheek or I just bit my tongue. And it's that like, you have to deal with it, you have to stop and it causes you to pause and it's really painful. But then a little while later, it's gone and you're moving on. It doesn't matter. It's really not that big of a deal. You're gonna go through crappy stuff. There are those really hard and painful things like loss or tragedy, but problems, some pain, you know, I tore my quad. I tore my right quadricep during a training accident two months ago. I couldn't walk. Um, I'm th you know, 35 years old now, so I'm like, am I gonna be able to recover? How will I come back from that? It was painful, I went through the pain. I got up the next day, I was on the bike. I'm trying to do leg extensions. I'm trying to regain my ability to walk. It's part of the process. Um, it really doesn't matter in the long run. So when you deal with problems, deal with them quick and move on. Number seven, health. Health is everything. Make sure you value it. I'm 35 now, I feel like I'm 18. I feel like I'm maybe, maybe 20 years old. I actually feel better than I did when I was younger, even though I was already training. So health is just so critical. Make sure you're, um, you're putting time and, and money and energy and effort. Make sure you're putting it on the calendar. Make sure that you're having fun with it. You know, you don't always have to strength train in the gym, although I think that that's a pretty important thing, but your health is just massively critical. Number eight on the list is wealth building some type of wealth, um, sacrificing some things so that you can build money, so you can weather tough times. Again, I mentioned my dog Oreo had cancer last year. Um, ICU visits, um, you know, cancer treatments, uh, medications, uh, massively expensive um, thing. When it comes to pets, you can't, you know, you can't put that on a, a payment plan. You gotta pay that stuff right away. Um, so the treatments I was able to afford for my dog bought him another six to nine months that, um, that he wouldn't have had otherwise. So you can buy time, you can buy things. And I wouldn't trade that time that I had with him where he was with me um, until his very last breath here, um, right with me. And um, wealth is important. Make sure you're building it. Make sure that you're spending time and, and effort and energy putting that into it. Number nine goes hand in hand with that. Invest in assets early. I think one of the biggest things that I did was when I was 22, 23, I focused on my income. By the time I had made and stored up $25,000, $30,000, by the time I was 23, 24, 25, um, I immediately dumped that into what we know now as Topline. I put everything I had into I put about $28,000 into Topline when I first started it. And I put it into hard assets, I put it into a lease. Um, then I refocused back on my income again and any money that I made I put back in um, I did the numbers the other day and it's over the last 13 years I've been able to store I call it storage on top of my investments I've been able to store away an additional like sixty eight hundred dollars a month for 13 years on top of putting about a quarter million dollars of assets into that to the business that you, you see now today so not only putting money into assets, but then also storing money aside so that when I do want to make plunges into investments that I can do that. 
Um, I didn't have leverage when I first started the gym, so I didn't have lines of credit and access um, and, and, and good relationships with the banks. I had no credit. So I had to take all of the cash and income and put that into the gym. Now I can have storage and cash on the side so that I can make different plunges and different investments, which I think is, is critical. Number 10, time. Time is everything. Control your time, work really hard, invest your time, sacrifice some of your time so that eventually you can get to be 35 and on a Monday on your birthday, you can be sitting outside sipping uh, alkaline water from a, a, a glass that your sister just bought you, shooting a video for YouTube. Um, at a $41 million uh, commercial development. Um, you want your time. You, you want to do everything you can to get your time. Sometimes that means you have to sacrifice, which we'll get into later, but make sure you're investing your time so that later on you can you know, buy your time back. Number 11, options. In life, you want to create options for yourself. You don't want to um, put yourself in a hole because you're slacking, you're not taking care of business, that you have to go do stuff all the time. You want to create the ability to say no to things, the ability to say yes to things, the ability to say no to a customer or a client you don't want to work with, to say, I can't put you on the schedule. But it's going to take you saying yes to a lot so you can get to the time where you can say no and you can have those options. So options are important to me. Number 12 is confidence. I think confidence is a critical piece in the whole entrepreneurial game. I think um, if you don't have to necessarily like be ego, confidence comes when you forget about yourself. Confidence comes when you're focused on the other person. Confidence comes when you're really self-assured with who you are. You don't have to fake things like me. Like I've got a, I've got a nine dollar Amazon watch on right now. You just heard it beep, and I actually have on some. I think these shoes were eight dollars at H and M. I just got those. Shirt's a built shirt kind of a nice polo, maybe a little bit more expensive than most. But what I'm saying is like confidence doesn't necessarily come from flash and this, that, and that. It just comes from being comfortable with who you are. Um, when I was younger, I oftentimes came across as cocky and arrogant and had a big ego. And I could totally see why people would have thought that because I was overcompensating. I wasn't necessarily confident and comfortable with who I am like I am now. So make sure you're confident in yourself. Build confidence. Do the things that build confidence. And that's not flash. That's not drip. That's not the earrings I used to have. That's just being confident with who you are, knowing who you are, strengths and weaknesses, and moving on. Number 13 is energy. You gotta have energy. You don't have to be crazy all the time, like being like a goofball, but you need energy. That comes from uh, good nutrition. That comes from um, reading and, and doing things that expand your mind. That comes from getting some sleep. That comes from eating the right foods. That comes from having a positive attitude. Make sure your energy's high. 14, attitude. I know when my attitude is good, I know when my attitude is bad, and I, I know how that affects everything that I do. When I've got a great attitude, I'm helping people, I'm leading my team, I'm making an impact. And when my attitude is off because of whatever's going on, as I mentioned earlier, you gotta get over things because it doesn't matter. Um, I know when my attitude's been affected, and I know I need to move forward with my attitude. That's a challenge to become unemotional sometimes and to stay analytical and objective, but it's super important, so make sure you do that. Number 15 is leadership. Leadership is needed now more than ever. Leadership is not something that is just born into you. Um, leadership is something that you can study and you can prepare for and you can rehearse and practice and get better at. Leadership is about taking ownership. As I've read in the book, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willick and Leif Babin, um, two former U.S. Navy SEALs, um, Man Up by Bedros Koulian, Grant Cardone, another mentor of mine, 10X, kind of just about taking ownership for your life and taking action and not blaming people and not being a little B word. So make sure you're, you're developing leadership and leadership habits. Number 16 is habits. What are your daily habits? What do you do in the morning? I call my morning the high performance morning routine. Everything I do is like, like Bedros Cooling would say, flipping the dials on, a, on the switchboard for NASA right before they do a launch. They got to flip all the dials and make sure everything's rocking and rolling so they can have a great day. What are your daily habits? Do you read? Do you listen to certain things that will make your mind work better? Do you have good habits like taking ownership, like not passing on the blame, like not complaining? Do you have good habits like storing away sixty-five to $7,000 a month um, so you can store that up so you can make investments when you're in your 30s like, like myself um, or taking all of your money and any other money that you did make and reinvesting that into assets that produce cash flow? Uh, what are your habits? Little habits really turn into big things, so make sure you're watching your habits as you get older. Um, the next thing on the list, 17. Food, food, hydration, water, anything you're putting into your body. 
be conscious of it. Make a deliberate effort with it. Make sure you're feeling yourself with the right things that make you feel good, make your stomach feel good. Last night had pizza, had, a, had some brownies, kind of a birthday treat and a Father's Day thing. And um, I didn't wake up feeling as good as I normally do. It just affects you. Make sure you're conscious of that. Make sure if you have an important meeting or um, an appointment that you want your energy to be high for, make sure you're eating right. Make sure your, your food is dialed. I'm 35. Um, had one of my best friends who used to work at the top shop with me say to me, Brett, man, you look better than you did, you know, eight, 10 years ago. And I was kind of thinking, man, I, I think I used to look better, but you know, it's all about what you're doing. It's all about what you're consistent with. And I'm consistent with my training, even through injury, even being 35, even having a lot of responsibilities, even having coronavirus, even having my dog passing away from cancer, even with dealing with everything that we all have to deal with in life, make sure that that you're training and make sure that your food is on point, make sure that you're staying healthy. Next thing, 18, mentors. And I've had a lot of you guys reach out to me and say, I'm mentoring you. Not that you need, you know, a few have said, hey, can you mentor me or whatever it is, but I'm putting out a video like this. This is mentorship. And the reason I'm putting these out is because of the Ed Milets and the Grant Cardones and, and the, the Jocko Willinks and the, the Bedros Koolians, the people that have impacted me, Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy, uh, John C. Maxwell, you, you, you can name them. Kevin O'Leary's YouTube is really good. I don't have to be with you to be your mentor. And I've never needed someone to be sitting right next to me. It's about how can I be resourceful enough to use and watch what they're doing. Gary Vaynerchuk and all these people, watch what they're doing, learn from what they're doing, and then implement that into my own business and career and life and body and health. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I'd watch Jay Cutler, the bodybuilder, and Kevin Laveroni, the bodybuilder, and I would watch all of their videos full blown. I'd watch A Cut Above by Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman, and I'd see how they ate. I'd see how they stayed disciplined. and. And I would take pieces and pages from them and, and Dorian Yates and, and Lee Haney and Arnold Schwarzenegger and I would just watch them, see what they're doing. And then I'd be resourceful and trying to implement similar things into my life um, that I could relate to and that would help me out. And it always paid off and it was free. So stay resourceful, find your mentors online, find them wherever you are, you have access. It's time to be resourceful. Now we're on 19, okay? So let's get through these quick. Um, different boxes. In life, we all have different boxes. We don't all have to check the same boxes. I'm 35, I don't have any kids, I'm not married. Um, I've had a house, but I don't own a house anymore because I think it's a liability and I don't think it's a smart investment if you're an entrepreneur. Um, I was talking to my buddy and I said, man, you know, I haven't checked the same boxes you have. Just thinking about turning 35 and he's a year older than me and best friend and buddy Nick says, you know what, man, everybody has different boxes everybody's boxes are different. Actually, as he said, everybody's boxes are different and it couldn't be any truer. Um, my life is not gonna look exactly like yours. Your life's not gonna look exactly like mine. All those people I just mentioned before that I used to take pieces and pages from, it's not gonna look exactly like theirs, so that's okay. Um, I don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to be exactly like me, but there are different pieces you can take from everybody. Just remember, your boxes are gonna look different than mine. Mine are gonna look different than yours, so. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Stay in your own lane. Number 20, coffee. Love it. Just want to add that onto the list, something I enjoy. Um, I didn't start drinking coffee until 2013. I love coffee. I love uh, cold brew is my favorite. Nitro, nitro cold brew would be, uh, you know, top notch, but haven't been going to the coffee shop lately. been just kind of hitting at home, hit, hit some cold brew at home, and then get out with my day. But coffee's amazing. 21, they go hand in hand reading. Uh, if it wasn't for reading and studying people and, and learning from other people like Brian Tracy and Jim Rohn, all these people I mentioned earlier, um, I don't think I'd be where I am today. And you got to remember, like, high school, not, not a very good student. College, I got it together as far as being able to do it, but it wasn't really my thing. But once I found out that I could learn about things that I could go apply and put into action right away, my life took off. And um, so when you're hearing me, you're probably hearing a lot of different people because I've taken so many pages from different people, which I'm appreciative um, to all those people, uh, Tony Rock, anybody you could think of. I've learned a lot from everybody in the personal development space. So um, I take all that in, I digest it, I try things, some things work, some things don't, but then I'm able to pass some things on to you and, and reading has been a big part of that. Number 22, um, just roll with it. And I put down shaving my head. When I was like 22, 23, I could see I was going just a little thin up top, shave my head. I said, let's just blow it out. Let's just move on. Um, 
And I always felt like that kind of gave me a superpower. I, I don't know, just shaving my head just like, it's not how, what you, you, you want to have good hair, everybody wants to look good and whatever, but it's kind of like just blowing something out and just not worrying about it. Help me become more comfortable with who I am and just rolling with it, man, because that's how life's going to be. Like, all of a sudden you're going to wake up, your hair is going to be gone or your body's going to look a little bit different or, um, you know, something could happen. You can get into a car accident or any number of things can happen. Or you can tear your quad and you can't walk for a certain amount of time and, and you can have, like, a little piece of your quad that you can visibly see is not there anymore. Um, just roll with it, man. It is what it is. That's how life is. you got to learn how to roll with the punches a little bit, move forward. Number 23. Personal development. So we talked about it with reading, but the same goes for audios and videos. And you can even watch a Netflix documentary on coaching, or you can watch the Conor McGregor Notorious movie and see how someone went from nothing to something. You don't have to take every piece, but you can learn so much and you can develop yourself personally if that's what you're listening to. I, I would say, um, I would say that's one of the most important things for me is making sure that I spend time. Um, in, in personal development every day. Number 24, journal. I think all men should be journaling. I can't speak on women because I'm not a woman, but I think everybody could benefit from it. But men especially, because we don't t typically spill all of our feelings all over the place. I don't think we should necessarily, but sometimes you can think and get above, like literally you're above your problems. You're looking down at your problems. And when you look down at your problems and you're not looking up at them, they seem a little bit more manageable. So journaling, writing down your goals every day for me has been very important. I wrote down what I wanted to do last year to this year and and um, I'm always assessing what I need to do, maybe to a uh, fault sometimes, but I've also accomplished a lot, so I think it has helped me quite a bit, tremendously. Number 25, invest into people, invest into relationships. So as much as I talked about investing financially earlier and you wanna do that at an early age, you also wanna do that with relationships. You wanna invest in other people, you wanna invest your time, energy, and effort in them. However, you also want to be sure that they're investing back into you. Not that you don't always have to expect something back, but make sure you're not over investing into people who might end up using you. Cause that can be done too if you're a really giving person like myself. So be cautious of that. Number 26, do morning cardio. Then have to be long. I've got a I've got a rogue eco bike and a concept two rower and I've got a, a five five eleven tactical uh, weight vest that I walk with. But do cardio every morning. Every time I've ever done cardio, when I'm getting ready for a bodybuilding competition when I was younger, or just trying to get shredded, or or whatever the reason I was doing is just trying to break out of a rut and just get my day moving. Just getting up and moving in the morning has always helped me. I don't think lifting in the morning is the best, especially if you're gonna lift heavy. I don't necessarily think it's the best because your spine's at its coldest. I've injured myself training really early in the morning. Um, your meal cadence is not quite there. Your hydration's not there. You get a little dehydrated overnight. So if you have to, I'm sure there's plenty of people who have gotten it done. But morning cardio for me, some mobility, some stretching has always been a big thing. 27, have some style, man. You don't have to break the bank. You know. I've got a $10 watch on pair of Justin Timberlake brand jeans because they can stretch a little bit and fit my legs in it. Um, have some style, something that makes you feel good, something that makes you, you know, you don't have to break the bank again, but something that makes you feel really good about yourself and confident. Um, I think it's really important to have a little bit of style. And people judge you based on how you look, how you wrap yourself. If you're a present and you're in a garbage bag, um, you're not going to look so good. But if you're a present and you're all wrapped up real neat, I mean, you could have a box of rocks inside of it, but if it's wrapped neatly, it looks good and that makes people want to open it up. Number 28, you can change. Big, this is a big one. You can change. Like I said, I was cocky. I was arrogant. Um, I was disrespectful to people. I did not handle myself well in relationships when I was in uh, my high school and college years. Um, I was disrespectful to authority. And I changed all that. I changed all that to, to really respecting the girlfriend that I would have now for eight years to respecting my family, to you know respecting all my clients, to respecting landlords if I had them, um, just to having a deep respect for other people. Just remember you can change. You don't have to stay one way. Um, you can always shift your mind and improve and you have to make a deliberate effort. You have to change your habits. You have to change your actions. You have to show self-discipline and you have to stay committed to it, but you can do it. Um, number 29, nights and weekends. Nights and weekends are important, man. If, if you wanna 
do something big, if you want to make some changes, if you want to improve yourself, you can't check out on Friday night and start drinking and smoking and going clubbing and going partying and going wasting money and going boating and going do this. I'm not saying that rest and relaxation isn't uh, couldn't be a valuable asset to you, but those are the times where you can read and do personal development, work on yourself, set new targets, revisit targets, get analytical, think about what you've done, be reflective, go read books, go listen to audios, go attend a seminar, go to a conference and make yourself better. Nights and weekends is how, how you change your situation. If you waste your nights and weekends, you're gonna d definitely be setting yourself back. And if you just take deliberate time and say, hey, I'm gonna invest as uh, Andy Frisella would say, I'm not gonna sacrifice, but I'm gonna invest this weekend into myself. I think you'll enjoy the payoff in the long run. Number 30, communicate. Learning how to communicate is a valuable asset. I see that with younger people. Now and more than ever, they don't know how to communicate. They don't even know how to use a tool like social media to communicate and create dialogue with other people and to, to open up conversations with other people. And then it's even worse when you get in person. You notice how now I'm not with you and I've only got one lens sitting in front of me. And right now, right off to the side, I've got me. So I could be looking at me right now and you see how that looks, but it looks a lot better when I'm looking directly at you when I'm communicating to you and you'll watch this whole video back, you'll notice that I'm looking at you. I'm talking with you. We're in a conversation right now. I treat you with respect because you just gave me your, your attention. So I wanna make sure that I give you the respect of speaking directly to you. So learn how to communicate. Learn how to have tact. If there's a touchy, tricky situation, learn how to communicate that clearly, concisely, and appropriately so that you can move forward and make things better. And that is very important for relationships. So make sure you learn how to do that. Um, the next one is important. 31, talking about taking extreme ownership. Number 31 is take the blame. Who cares, man? Like, who really cares? Who's the blame? Somebody does you wrong? Wouldn't you rather be in a position of power where you say, I'm the blame. I take the blame. It's on me. Let me make a difference. Even if it's really not on you, just take the blame and move on. Eat the bullet. Eat the frog. At the end of the day, no one cares. So just take the blame and move on. Don't blame your parents like I've done. I've blamed people in my life for not being there. I've blamed um, clients. I've blamed friends. I've blamed staff. Take the blame. Take the ownership. People respect it, and it's going to make you a lot better person. 32. We're almost there. 32. Take action. Action is important. If you deal with anxiety like I have, if you're an anxious person, if you're, a, you're an overthinker, Take action, take action, take action. One of my mentors, Bedros Kulian, always says, action alleviates anxiety. Take action, do something, get up, get a quick win, go for a walk, drink some water, go send 10 uh, video messages to people that you care about, just say, hey, hey, hey. Hey, just wanted to let you know I appreciate you. That's one I use. It's very simple. Got that one from Grant Cardone. Simple. Send somebody a message you feel good. Get a little something done. Go clean your apartment. Go clean your bathroom. Go take a shower. Go give your head a nice fresh shave. Shave your face. Get a nice outfit. Go to the mall. Buy a new shirt. Whatever it is. Take action. And then when you're done with all that BS, go do something that's really going to make a difference. Go close a deal. Go build that product. Go build out that website. Go handle that deal. Go do something important so you can make a, make a big splash and you'll feel better right away. Number 33, respect. Respect others. Respect others. Show them that respect. Treat them well. Treat them kindly, even if they don't treat you that same way back. But the next one on that is respect yourself too. If people are beating up on you, um, if somebody needs to get punched in the face, not physically, but you know, you know, you need to handle a tough conversation with someone. Respect yourself enough to end things quickly with people. If somebody, if some, a customer needs to go, you need to fire a customer. You need to blow out a teammate who just ain't doing what they need to do, or you need to lean on them because they're not. You're tolerating something that you shouldn't. Don't tolerate anything that you shouldn't. The second you start to tolerate things, people kind of take advantage of that. That's no good. Number 30, uh, 34, go bigger. Everything that you're doing, everything that you're thinking. Um, as I'm, I, I'm 35 years old, I'm like, man, I should have done this bigger. I should have thought bigger. I should have went bigger with this. My only regrets are just not doing it bigger. And even though I've accomplished a significant amount in the eyes of what other people would be thinking, I don't think I've done one one millionth of what I'm 
built for, what I'm capable of, and what my potential is. So I'm a little bit down on myself today, even though other people would say, oh, yeah, you did some good stuff. And it's like, I just know what I'm capable of. So I want to go bigger, and I want to encourage the people that are around me to go bigger and think bigger in their life. And number 35, something that I think is very important, and this is different for everybody, and as I said on the, the nights and weekends thing, it's important to have R&R. Number 35 is have some fun. And as I turn 35, one of those things I realize is the time where I set aside some time to, to walk around shirtless in the sun and read, the time that I spend uh, with my mom and, and dogs sipping coffee, the time that I spend watching an old movie I love. Right, so I got blown out there for a second. Sorry about that. Um, the last thing on the list is pretty simple. It's make sure you have some fun. Make sure you do some things that you enjoy. Make sure that you have some kind of outlet that you enjoy. I don't know if that's you go golfing. I don't know if that's you work on cars, sports cars. Maybe you, you um, do the body. Like for me, I love training. I love the bodybuilding stuff. I love training real hard. Maybe you like to go to concerts. But make sure you have some fun. If you're an entrepreneur, sometimes you think I got to sacrifice and do that. And you, and you definitely do. And I did. And I did that. And I don't think I'd be where I am if I hadn't done it. But I do wish that I had strategically placed some time on my, my calendar to have fun, to be able to enjoy a few things. And I think the discipline's key. I think it's important to have that. But I do think you need to have some fun and enjoy yourself. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to sit here with me on my birthday for a half hour. And run through some of the things that I think could really help you. 35 things, 35 years, 35 things that are really important. I've, I've learned a lot and literally I made that list. Um, I just kind of typed it up on my phone this morning. I just, it took me like six minutes to type that up. It's just like, what's most important? What's most important? And it's like five minutes later, I'm like, here's my list. Here's 35 things that I would love to pass on to somebody else as I turn 35 that I think would help you guys out. So if you're in your 20s or your teens, like a lot of you that have reached out 18, 19, 20 years old, want to be a personal trainer, want to open a gym, want to do what I've done, um, those are some of the things that I think you should, you should carry with you. It doesn't, you don't have to be 35 to do that. You don't have to be 25 to do it. But those are the things that will matter at any point in your life. And I think as you get older, certain things become more important and certain things become less important. But... That's all I got for you, baby. So, hey, you guys have a great rest of the day. If you enjoyed this video, drop a comment. Hopefully it helps you out. Take a few of those things, work on them. But I want to make more of an impact. I want to add more value to people that are out there that I haven't even met, that, I, that don't even live in where I live, that, that can watch a video and be inspired and motivated. And hopefully this video does that, just that and it helps you guys out. So, hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my birthday and get a nice pump in. But we'll catch you guys on the flip side. And thanks again for watching.